so you know it, it's a common thing for people to approach when they're thinking about uh, grease pencil objects. That's Blender's flagship animation feature, where you can animate directly inside of the program, and you know it has a lot of uh, positives, but it also has a lot of negatives. So I want to go over this test animation that I did here by pulling up the original file that I did it in real quick. So we have this test animation that I did using Grease Pencil inside of Blender. And the main way I got this done was by utilizing sculpt mode. First thing you should learn about Blender's uh, user interface is that there's different modes for adjusting different parts of your object and your scene. I'm in a 3D scene right now. It looks like a 2D scene, but you know, if I grab this and turn on overlays by hitting this double circle button up here, you can see 3D scene. I have edit mode, which allows me to interact with the different vertices on this grease pencil object. If you've ever worked in a program like Flash, you'll be familiar with what's called vector drawing. Uh, it's different from bitmap drawing, which is or raster drawing, which is what people are usually used to working with in programs like MS Paint or Photoshop, where you have pixels arranged in a grid, and you can change the value of those different pixels to get different drawings, and they all come together to create an image. That's not what we're doing here with Grease Pencil. We're using vectors, meaning that we're taking individual points. So I'm in vertex select mode, and let me drag and select a bunch of the stuff. You can see I have all these little tiny points on my lines that show me that what Blender is doing to create my line is drawing lines between these different points. So the positives of working with Grease Pencil is the vector drawing. It gives you more flexibility with what you can do in the long run. Like, if you notice these three frames that I start this animation off with, these are all one drawing. And what I've done is I've gone into sculpt mode by hitting the drop down menu on the top left, selecting sculpt mode, and it gives me this little brush right here. If I want to change the size of this brush, I can either hit F to scale it, which scales brush it scales brushes in both draw mode and sculpt mode. We'll get to draw mode later. Or I can go up here to the top left corner and I can mess around with this radius slider. It does the same thing. So what I did, I went to the frame that I wanted to change on my timeline, or in the case of using Grease Pencil, my dope sheet, it's ever so slightly different than your timeline. So I went to the frame that I wanted to change in my timeline. So I had this frame, I went to my second frame, and I used my sculpt tool. I selected the part that I wanted to drag so I just sort of dragged it to the place where I want it to be. And that allows me to make slight variations to my drawing. So if I wanted to do really quick in-betweening, I could do that just by going into sculpt mode after creating my extreme poses. But there is even more. I have access to my modifiers panel, which is this little wrench icon right here. I can add modifiers like the noise modifier that I already have in here. What this noise modifier does is pretty much create an automatic line boiling effect. So I'm going to go to object mode and turn off overlays and go to a place where there's a long hold, like right here. If you, I look at the timeline by sliding this up, you can see that these keyframes, for this distance in between, there's no new keyframes. But if you look at my drawing, you can see that my drawing is still changing. It's got a line boil effect on it, which I created using this noise modifier. So let me just get rid of that noise and add a new one by hitting this drop down menu right here. I add this noise modifier. You see it's kind of moving a bit hectic. This isn't necessarily what I want. So what I'm gonna do first is change its influence. I hit this drop down menu that says influence. I click this pencil icon that says layers. I choose the layer what that I want, which is my lines layer. And now it's only gonna add noise effects to the line layer. So you can see that only the line layer is jittering around right now. But I think it's jittering a little bit too far, so I'm gonna turn down the position slider. I'm gonna turn it to something like 0.08 or something like that. And now if I slide here, it's still jittering around, but it's not jittering as much. I think it's a tolerable amount. But I kinda want it to be I kind of want to change it so it looks like the jittering is a bit tighter. So I'm going to go back to my noise modifier. I'm going to turn up my noise scale, and you'll notice that the space between these wiggly lines is getting tighter and tighter. 
I'm gonna put it around 50%. And I like that. And the way that you would have done this previously as an animator is by redrawing every single frame of a hold. I also have access to my materials panel. So if I decide I wanna change the color of the sweater, I can select the material that I want by going to this uh, checkered ball icon right here, selecting the fill color because I had this material set to be a fill. You have two properties with materials. You have your stroke and your fill. So I could go in here to my, my fill color for this particular material and I could change it so her sweater's red now. That's one big advantage with working with grease pencil. You can always go back and change your colors by just adjusting them, <laughs> adjusting a slider. If I wanted to add some basic lighting effects, I could go to my effects panel, which is this little magic wand icon right here below your modifiers panel. I could hit this drop down menu and I'm gonna add a rim effect to emulate some rim lighting. Actually, you know what? Let's do this inside of that environment that I made earlier. So I wanna add some lighting effects to this grease pencil object. So I go to my effects panel, I hit that drop down menu and I add rim. If I wanna change where the rim is placed, I can adjust the offset of it by moving around these sliders. So I want the rim to come from the left side and the top. So yeah, I like the look of this lighting effect, but maybe I want it to be a bit more blurred out. I can hit this drop down menu, and if I wanna change the X and Y of the blur, because the way blurring works in uh, Blender, you can adjust how much it's blurred in the X axis and the Y axis independently. I just grab one that I wanna change, I bring it down, drag and hold, bring it down to the second one that I wanna change. So now I can change both at the same time. If I wanna change the amount of segments, I can adjust my samples. So right now it's set to two, let's make it a bit more fine, set it to six, there we go. Neat 2D lighting effect. But there is a big downside to working with grease pencil that I think is very much worth mentioning and that's that you don't have access to what is called the shader editor. So if I click my grease pencil object, you can see within it, I have what's called a principled BSDF. It gives you this default shader inside of your basic material inside of a grease pencil object, but just know that this shader doesn't really do anything. So if I decide I want to delete this shader in here by hitting X, it's not gonna do anything to my grease pencil object. It's not gonna affect it whatsoever. Essentially what it does is capture light information and I create a new UV sphere and I add a new material to it. I have my principal BSDF, which has my light information. If I get rid of that, it doesn't get any light information. If I get what's called a diffuse BSDF, which is really Blender's most basic shader and I run it through a color ramp. All a shader does is collect light information. The issue is, is that they can do a lot for your animations. Not having access to shaders mean you don't have access to things like normal maps. It, it means you don't have access to a lot of different lighting effects. Your options with Grease Pencil are gonna be significantly limited in that respect. Not that there's aren't, there isn't a lot of things that you can do, like messing around with different effects and modifiers using your Grease Pencil object can achieve a wide variety of different looks. One big thing is grease pencil objects do not cast shadows. So if I go into this scene and let me create a new light object, I'm gonna turn this up to 1000 watts. And if you look at the floor, you can tell that the grease pencil object is not casting a shadow. It's not influencing the objects around it with light information in any way. So if you're trying to make a grease pencil object seem like it's part of a scene, that's gonna be very difficult to do. So uh, let's look at the second option that you have as far as using 2D animation in a 3D scene. I I'm just talking about 2D animation in a 3D scene. There's other ways you can do it, even more options, but we're talking about comparing grease pencil and PNG sequences, which is what we're talking about next. There we go. So let me click this and go into its shader editor. And as you can see, I've already got some nodes plugged into it. I've already got some things plugged around doing some fancy things. 
So when you're working with PNG sequences, the way that you get them into Blender is first you have to turn on import images as planes in your preferences. The way you do that is by going to edit in the top left corner of your window, hitting that drop down menu, going to preferences, going to add-ons, and then hitting that search bar and hit import or images as planes. There we go. Images as planes. Make sure it is on so you can import images as planes. And then you hit shift A, you go down to image, hit image as planes. You find your image wherever it is or find your image sequence wherever it is. You select it, go down to your last frame, hold shift, and then select your last frame. And then you check this box that says animate image sequences right here on the right side of this file explorer. And then you hit import images as planes and it will import it. You'll notice that there's something a bit funky happening with this image sequence. Let me turn off overlays real quick and scroll through my timeline. And you'll see that the lighting on it is much different than what you would normally get with a grease pencil object. And that's because I've added what is called a normal map. If you've ever done game design or even like most 3D work, you'll be a little bit familiar with normal maps. The way they work is by essentially emulating depth by using a, a, a color image. So if I take my normal map, which is this node right here, which has my sequence of normal maps into it, they'll look like this. And I plug that into the color of my principled BSDF. You will see that it looks like this. You'll see these colors pop up. And then this is what's telling Blender, hey, everything that is on this particular side or everything that is using this particular color needs to be lit in this way. Treat it as if it's facing this direction. It's emulating beveling by using color. And if I change my camera angle, you'll notice that this is just a flat image. There is no real depth happening here. And let me show you how I made these. What I use is a program called Lighter. It's spelled in a really funny way, L-A-I-G-T-E-R, Lighter. The way that I did this, I, I'll send the link to the program in the chat later on. The way that I did this uh, was by hitting this button in the top left corner, this import image button. I just select one, I hit open, and then it'll give you like a little window that has the option to import an image as a sequence. It will say something along the lines of, I noticed that there were files with a sequenced uh, image name uh, in this folder. Do you want me to import them as an image sequence? And then you hit yes, and it'll import these as an image sequence. One thing you should know about Lighter though, is that it does not like bad hardware. So if you are running on crummy hardware, it's not gonna like you and it's gonna take a minute for your stuff to import. So I would recommend if you're gonna use this on a regular basis, maybe build yourself a nice little PC or something. Beautiful thing about this is if I take this light icon right here and I drag it around, you can see that it's emulating having lighting effects on here. And the reason why lighter runs so slow is because it's meant for video game sprites. <laughs> so it's meant for much lower resolution images than what I'm using and what you're likely using. You can adjust the different properties of your normal map in this bump menu over here. You can also get different kinds of maps. So you can get your normal map, your specular map, parallax, diffuse. It gives you a whole bunch of different options for what kinds of images that you can get out of here and you can use them for a ton of different things. The way that I use them in Blender is by adding a image texture node. By doing that, I go to my shader editor, I hit shift A, I go down to texture and then select image sequence. And then I can find it, I can import it in there. The way that I use my normal maps is by finding that image sequence, importing it into this image texture, taking the color of that, and then plugging into the normal value of my BSDF, of my principled BSDF. But what I like to do is in between my image texture and my normal value is I like to add a hue uh, saturation value node because that allows me to change the intensity of my normal map without 
having to like re-render everything. So I can adjust the saturation of it. And if I turn down the saturation, it turns down the effect of the normal map. If I turn it up, it turns it up. I can also change the hue to change the angle of my normal map because the way normal maps work is uh, relying on color. So if I change the hue, it'll change what angle everything is at, which you can use for some interesting lighting effects. Also, if you're gonna be using normal maps or if you're gonna be using image sequences in general, let me show you the way that you set them up real quick. So we have this animation. I'm gonna create a new file. Let's save that because I don't wanna redo that. I wanna have a nice thing to export after we're done with this class. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, go down to image, where's that? Image, import images as planes, go to my desktop, select all the images, animate as image sequence, import images as planes. Now I have to switch to rendered mode. So I've got this image right here. Let's scale it up so we can see what's going on. And as you can see, it's got no normal map happening. So let me find the light and move it around so we can really get a sense of it. It's just flatly lit, which is not what we want. If we're gonna be using a PNG sequence, we wanna have fun with it. Now we got our shaders. As a shortcut, I'm going to grab my image texture that I have inside of my shader editor. To move it around, I'm going to, uh, give me a second, I gotta get to the place I want. To move it around, I'm gonna hit G to move it into a place that's a little bit more clean. I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate it. I'm gonna hit that little file icon right here. I'm gonna go into my folder that says normal, which has my normal maps in it. I'm gonna hit the A button to select everything import image, then I will hit shift A to create a new hue and saturation. The way I got this little search bar was by selecting the search option at the top. Hue saturation node, plug it in here and plugging the output of that hue saturation into this normal option right here. There we go. Now we've got our normal map. I'm gonna adjust the hue around just a little bit. Let's uh, turn that hue down to zero and let's turn the saturation down to like 80%. There we go. And now we have our normal map functional. But as you'll recognize, I don't get the option to redraw my PNG sequences once I make them happen. <laughs> So if you have a mistake uh, inside of your PNG sequences, like you want to change the color of something, you, you really don't have that level of flexibility to go back and fix things, not as much as you did working inside of Grease Pencil. So if you're trying to work on something very quickly and you know you're going to make mistakes, you know things are going to be shifting around, PNG sequences might not be the best way to go about it but they do look really nice in 3D scenes and they do cast shadows. And also just so you know, you don't have to choose between one or the other. You can make an animation as a grease pencil, export it as a PNG sequence, and then re-import it into Blender. That's always an option. So if you want that flexibility initially and you just want to bring it back in, you can totally do that. Like when you have it as a PNG sequence and it's casting shadow, is it gonna cast a shadow over that whole plane or just the drawn object? Okay, there is a way that you adjust that. So if I create a new plane, you will see, if I bring that into position, you will see that it currently is casting a shadow using the entire plane, which is a problem. We don't usually want that. We want it to treat this alpha object, this, uh, this PNG sequence, as if it was an independent drawing and inside of our uh, scene. So what we're going to do is change our shadow options. And we do that material by material. We do that like by object. So what we do is we go into our material panel, like we did earlier with that checkered circle. We scroll down till we get to settings and we go to our shadow mode. We're gonna hit the drop down menu on our shadow mode that says opaque at the beginning. And we're gonna set it to either alpha clip or alpha hash. I'm gonna set it to alpha clip. There we go. 
yeah, I think that's a pretty important thing to get across if you're trying to work with them. Super powerful stuff though. And there are way more shader options than just using normal maps inside of uh, using PNG sequences. Like you have options for masking. Like if you wanted to have part of your uh, character's body to be metallic, but you didn't want to have to import a separate drawing, you can do that using mask. I don't have an example of that right now, but you know, if you ever want to see some different shader options using PNG sequences, I can definitely go over that. My friend Alan, he has a, a YouTube channel. I think he did a video on that. I can send that to the chat later on.